Good morning, or good afternoon, good evening. This is Roger Gilbert, and I'm reporting from Milling and Grain magazine, but also International Aquafeed here in Cancun, Mexico. We were at DSM's World Nutrition Forum. This is the forum that's held every couple of years and has so far been in places like uh, Cape Town, South Africa, Munich in Germany, etc. And it's a fantastic event which it draws together in the region and globally uh, nutritionists and others involved in the feeding of our livestock and also our aqua species. But I'm, in the, I'm very pleased to say I'm in the company of Bob Langett. He's the retired uh, sustainability VP with uh, McDonald's and he made a keynote presentation this morning which I have uh, asked if he would join me to discuss some of the highlights that he mentioned uh, to our 800 participants at the conference this morning. Bob, welcome. I love being here and you're right about this conference, it's terrific. Yeah, it is, and uh, it usually gets a great turnout, and I think it's also directing the industry and some of the topics that it covers. Well, one of the things I'm very impressed with is, is sustainability front and center, or what? Yeah. I mean, so much, uh, they must have mentioned the term sustainability uh, a couple dozen times. So, you know, part of the theme of my talk was this evolution of sustainability. I mean, when I started working on this 35 years ago, there wasn't any language. Yeah on this, it's a blank slate. There's no, there's no uh, frameworks, no measurements, no people setting, no jobs in, in this, and uh, I stumbled into it. So to think that it's come this far, mm -hmm. where companies, I mean, it's become, for most big companies, especially branded companies, it's a very much a mainstream. Mm -hmm. I was a staff for one or two people for many of my years at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Today, the, my successor said they had 34 people working on wow. this. Oh. I mean, that's a change, isn't it? it? Yeah. And, and, and I wonder, though, you know, if you say that most of those big companies which you showed this morning have sustainability offices and departments, yeah. do you s consider feed manufacturers, for instance, should they have a sustainability officer? Well, uh, first of all, I admit that I don't know the most about mm -hmm. that industry. Mm -hmm. But they, so I'm not sure how big they are. Mm -hmm. uh, but you need to have a strategy, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's talk less about people. Let's talk about the ideal thing is I think every company out there, especially in food and ag, which has only become bigger and more controversial and more technical. And can you imagine where it's going to go over the next 30 years? Mm -hmm. It's going to be unimaginable. So I think companies need to have a, a strategic framework mm -hmm. that's proactive, that doesn't wait for others. If you wait around for people to tell you what to do, they're going to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. So be proactive. And instead of looking at this as a risk, being risk adverse, or I could, I could open Pandora's box. Isn't this going to cost me more money? Mm -hmm. You know, th that's such a, a a negative view. They should. Companies are seeing now that it's an opportunity. They really are. Mm -hmm. They're seeing that the holistic case, the return on investment on sustainability, it can't be looked at just purely from the cost I pay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you save money, but it's investors, mm -hmm. it's your employees. It's your brand, it's your reputation. There's so many involved, so many things involved in why there's a sound reason for a business case for the companies that you're referring to. If they're not on board with a proactive strategy, get started because before you know it's gonna to be too late and I bet you your competitors will pass you by. Mm -hmm. I compare this very much to uh, I mean, the sea change in corporate responsibility. I think that there was nothing 35 years ago, yeah. and it's escalating today. I compare it to like the Moore's curve for the, the chip, mm. where the power of the chip doubles every two years. Mm. That's sort of, I mean, look, corporate sustainability is not quite like that, but it's on a quick curve mm. upward. Mm. And do you want to be the Sears robot? Do you want to be the Blackberry? Do you want to be the blockbuster mm. that didn't see the new innovation coming mm. forward? Mm. I mean, I think you want to be on board on this to, to thrive in the future. Yeah, and you've got to get in. I, I guess what you're saying is you've got to get into the swim to know what's involved. Don't be afraid of it. And don't be afraid of it. But also you mentioned a curve, another curve, which showed uh, that if you leave it too late, you might run into a crisis uh, situation where you have to act without being able to prepare. 
I think the, you, you're getting into one of my uh, pet peeves about business. Mm -hmm. I call it the disease of waiting and waiting and waiting. Mm -hmm. You know, most companies, even today, you have all these big issues of society hitting certain companies. In general, what they do is they wait, wait, wait. And instead of taking an issue on a curve, so every issue of society has some sort of curve where it emerges. Mm -hmm. And then over time, it could be several years, it, it gets on a curve upward. If you don't do anything about it, mm -hmm it percolates and it becomes a crisis. And all of a sudden the politicians, the lawyers, the media, uh, legislators get involved, regulations come, things that businesses don't want. Mm -hmm. And then you have to react to a crisis. Mm -hmm. You come up with a solution that's probably silly, not scientific and costs you more money. So this curve is work on the left side of the curve when it's emerging. You have time to work with partners that are smart. You can test things that could work. You can be more science-based. You can be more economical. I'm telling you that more companies should be working on that left side of that curve versus yeah. waiting. Why wait? Mm. Well, uh, I was also, you mentioned partners. Uh, in your experience, are partners always positive and helpful? Or is it a bit of a challenge to work with partners in this area of sustainability? Well, it's, it's both. But, but in general, my message is you got to have partners. Mm. Companies can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. There's no company in this world that I know of that can go out there in the world and know enough, have enough credibility. Mm -hmm. You need, and you, by the way, you need to work with your critics. Mm -hmm. you know, so you shouldn't be looking for, oh, I'm going to work with a uh, NGO that's you know, super friendly and blah, blah, blah. Well, what credibility does that have in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. So when, we look f when I look for partners for McDonald's, uh, whether it was the Environmental Defense Fund, the World Wildlife Fund, the Dr. Temple Grandin, these were all people that were fiercely independent, that were very science-based, because we wanted them mm. to be that way. Mm. Because if we're going to say we're good on sustainable beef or we have good animal welfare practices, they have to back it up. Yeah. They're not going to believe Bob Langer from McDonald's, yes, yes. are they? I, I might be a good guy. I hope I'm honest. Yes, yes. I am honest. Yes. But still, they're not going to yeah. believe me. They're going to believe Dr. Temple Grandin. If they say McDonald's created the best animal welfare program that's ever been developed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we did develop a good program, and she gave us credibility. Yes. So you kind of look for those people out there that can help. Now, there are, you know, 10% of the NGOs out there, you know, I wouldn't work with. They're, maybe mm -hmm. they're out there to, uh, you know, just clamor and yell and scream and all that type of stuff. But 90% of them, I think, are well-intended. Criticism is good. Mm -hmm. Companies need to be, mm -hmm. not get mad because you're not perfect. So don't take the criticism that they don't like you. Take the criticism mm -hmm. that they want you to improve. Mm -hmm. Really, that's what I've learned over my years. They're, they're ready to help you out if you are ready, ready yeah. to get better. Yeah. So the, the advice, as I understand it from you, is, is get involved, get positive, get out there, and take on the challenge. Yes. Uh, I would encourage that, and for those that say, well, you know, it's a step too far for me, you know, um, mm. it's too technical, uh, it's just complicated, aren't I opening Pandora's box? Mm. Am I going to open my company to criticism because we're not perfect? By the way, I'm not denying all those things are possible, but what I'm saying is if you do it the right way, and uh, I use this term of being transparent, mm. and it's another problem that mm. companies have. What we've learned over the years is that the stakeholder out there wants companies to be transparent. And the definition of that, they're not looking for perfection. Mm -hmm. So when you start, in whatever industry we're, I'm speaking to, yeah. don't start with the idea I gotta be perfect. Mm -hmm. Because the consumer, the stakeholder, they want you to care. Mm -hmm. They want you to show that you care. They want you to try things out. They want you to listen to them. Mm -hmm. They want you to admit what your problems are. And then you can talk about your progress and be uh, credible about it. Mm -hmm. Now, how many companies do that? So it's a really, I think there's like too many lawyers involved, the yeah. communication people get involved, they want everything you know, wrapped up in a perfect bow. Mm -hmm. Sustainability is not that way. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to communicate that way because you will make yourself a target. Mm -hmm. So you need to do it the right way by being humble, uh, science-based, work with partners, have your partners give the message too. Yeah. Yeah. It can be done. So yes, jump in, yeah. but realize you want to do it the right way as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Sound advice. And uh, 
what, what are you doing now? I, I mean, I mentioned you're retired, and uh, I think you still have a lot to obviously to offer uh, from what I've heard this morning. Uh, what, what are you doing in your work life, or is there a work life? There's a work life, and you know, my sweet spot is advising companies on probably what I'm talking about right now. I just think the sweet spot is fantastic for business to make a difference in the world and be good for business and be good for society. I've seen it time and time again. And so I want to help companies mm -hmm. see that they can be more sustainable every day and do good for the things that their business makes an impact on society. And they can do their good things for their business growth. That they're so I firmly believe in that. I think every company listening to this discussion we're having, they can do it. So yeah. I want to help that. I wrote a book called The Battle to Do Good. Yep. I give a lot of uh, uh, hard knock nuggets yeah, okay. of advice in, in the book. And uh, so I look for uh, helping okay. companies that sincerely want to change, uh, helping them out. Bob, you've told me before that the feed industry was a little bit removed from what your normal activities were around sustainability. Uh, but you must have come into connection with the feed industry at some point. Do you have a, an example or a story about how that, how that transpired? I do. Actually, it's a big story. Uh, it's probably one of the favorite things I've ever worked on. It didn't start out good, though. This is back in 2006. I woke up one morning, and I'm at Blackberry. Uh, was this idea that we're getting attacked from Greenpeace. They're, they're in our restaurants, chained to our tables and chairs, protesting McDonald's destroying the Amazon, uh, uh, eating up the Amazon mm -hmm. was their report. Mm -hmm. And it was all based on uh, too much soy being grown in Brazil uh, that is exported to Europe, used for chicken feed that go into chicken McNuggets. Yeah. And so who do they decide to attack? Did they attack the uh, feed companies or you know the Cargills of the world? Mm. No. Mm. They attacked McDonald's and they came after us and it was a shock to us. It was a shock, shock to our management team. It was not on our radar screen and it really made us think like what are our suppliers doing? Why aren't our suppliers handling this issue? Mm. That, that, was like, that was our first thought. Why is this on our lap? Mm. Why aren't the Cargills of the world you know, taking care of this issue before it hits our plate? We feel yeah. it's the role of suppliers to stay ahead of these issues. Mm. So we quickly uh, huddled and we decided that we agreed with Greenpeace, which is, you know, I, I can't say I often yeah. do that. And maybe your audience yeah. doesn't like what I say, but we read yeah. the report that same day. I talked to respected scientists at Conservation International and the World Wildlife Fund, who I trust. Mm. And they basically said, hey, yeah, their science is basically telling it as it is. And so we decided that we wanted to do something about it. Called up Greenpeace and said, hey, how about we work together? They were shocked. I later learned that they were really shocked because you know, normally they're a campaigning yeah. organization. Are they really solution-based? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. But in this case, we actually worked together. We got other retailers to join in our effort. We got with the soy industry who eventually agreed and announced three months later a whole moratorium on those practices that's been an mm. attack since then. I think it's been a, it's just an amazing accomplishment yeah. that we did that. Yeah. And do and you think that the feed industry should be looking out for issues that might be coming this way like this? I think, you know, you got to, as, as I mentioned before, you should be looking at all the issues that can impact your business, understand mm. them, which ones are material, where are they at in the curve process, are they emerging, how far along are they? What are, your, what are the ones that you should work on? Mm -hmm. So yes, you need society. We are serving society. Mm -hmm. And any company that's not developing a plan, I also not, don't want to even call it sustainability. Mm -hmm. I want to call it the, the business society plan. Because mm -hmm. you know, you're serving people every day. Society allows you to be in business. Yeah. So you need to have a society plan that says, how can I make the better world through what we do? But let's do it in a way that makes good business sense yeah. at the same time. And I think, uh, Bob, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I know the conference is uh, not over yet. There's plenty for us to uh, indulge in. But I think if there's anybody out there who would like to connect with Bob, there's going to be a, a link at the bottom of this video. But uh, for now, Bob, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Good talking to you. Thank you.